Tonight on the show, we're talking about the neo-feminist agenda as a eugenics operation. The type of mind control that is launched as part of this agenda that specifically targets women in our society and foments the war, the ever increasingly belligerent war of division between the sexes. And I was talking about how many women in our society support order followers because they've been taught somehow that that's uh, an epitome of masculinity and that's how men should be behaving you know they should be authority figures you know and that government is good government's looking out for our interests it cares about you you know as an entity as an institution the people in it they're all good-hearted caring people the police all have great intentions oh they're they're just good people you know, I just completed an entire series of shows on order followers and how there's never been an order follower in the history of the universe that has been a moral human being. Get as offended about that as you want. Blanket statement, 100% eternally. They are antitheses of each other. They are polar, diametrically opposed polar opposites. For someone to be a truly moral being, they cannot follow orders. They must exercise conscience, the definitive knowledge of the difference between right and wrong behavior. And exercising conscience is taking willful action to choose right action over wrong action once the definitive difference between right and wrong behaviors is fully understood. An order follower never engages in that judgment process, ever. That judgment process is wiped out, is abdicated. They say to someone else, Oh, you tell me what's right and wrong, and then I'll perform the behavior. And by definition, if you are acting in that capacity, you are engaging in immorality. Now, you won't hear Christians talking about that, though, these fake-ass Christians. You won't hear them talking about that. You, they're pieces of garbage, is what they are. Christians in name only. You want to talk about... I have to believe in Jesus, salvationism, garbage that was given to you by your satanic masters. But you'll never talk about the immorality of order following. No, because to you, order following is a virtue, just like your garbage religion. You know, just like all the other garbage religions out there, like Islam and Judaism and Hinduism and Buddhism and all the religions. It's all garbage. It's all there to hold you back from truth. For all the dunces that haven't figured it out yet, the New Age movement's one of them, modern science is one of them, so-called science, which is nothing but government-backed, grant-money-funded scientism that's going to find the results that Big Daddy government, who gives the grant money to do that, so-called science, wants out there. Money's the biggest religion in the world, folks. The New Age movement is right up there with all the other religions, just another cul-de-sac. It's all Christians in name only, Jews in name only, Muslims in name only, Buddhists in name only. 99.99999% of them are actual garbage human beings that wouldn't know one thing about morals if it ran over them like a freight train. And these are all the people in society that would be, be some of the first to tell you following orders is some kind of a virtue. And people wouldn't be raised like that if they had any kind of decent parenting. And where parenting used to have a nurturing influence was in the feminine influence within the family. Not anymore. Women want to be men now. You know, they, that's a, one of the big pillars and tenets of neo-feminism is women are men. There's no difference between the sexes. We need to blur all the difference between the sexes and cut out any kind of traditional classical roles that women or men played in society. Women as nurturers, men as protectors. We can't have that. We have to blur all of those, you know, natural tendencies, bring everybody into an androgynous glop. Because they're easier to control that way. That's the reason it's done. 
Let me tell you something, folks. I was involved in an organization firsthand as a member of the Whitehall Church of Satan in Whitehall, Pennsylvania. And I'm telling you, one of their main agendas in that satanic organization was the propagation of androgyny. Masculinization of women, feminization of men. Emasculation of men and hypermasculization of women. To bring, into, to bring people into an androgynous pool from which they could be morally, more easily directed and manipulated. And if you don't think think tank mind control is behind that, and the occultists that work through these think tanks and these satanic organizations, you don't know what's going on on this planet at all. And all the people who want to cling to their religious garbage, dogmatic, belief, lie systems, okay, Buying into all those dogmatic lies about, you know, what religion is telling you is morality. They have no idea about the occult and they're some of the most asleep people in the world. They don't understand how Satanism is run and works and operates in every institution in this society. And I'm telling you, that's what's also behind this neo-feministic agenda. you got to look into the Involvement of all these think tank mind control organizations. The Tavistock Institute of Human Relations in London is one of the biggest ones to research and look into and understand the agenda that they're pumping out there and why they want this neo-feminist agenda broadcast everywhere. They need the breakdown of the familial dynamic. They need the destruction of the strong man in society. People want to whine and complain about patriarchy. The neo-feminist agenda wants the destruction of the ability of men rising up together to stand up against the tyranny of the state. That's one of its biggest overarching agendas. And most women are too mind-controlled to be able to see that. Because all they hear are the things that they're being promised. It's like all the idiots that voted this clown actor, Obama, into office. Oh, he's going to give us a phone. Well, hey, let's give up all of our freedoms to get that phone. That's so, it's so great what he's done with stolen money. He's given everybody free phones with stolen money taken by coercion and violence. Isn't that so wonderful? He's such a wonderful man. He's a great actor, I'll tell you that much. Great actor. He, he pumps out the NLP, the Neuro Linguistic Programming, pretty well. He doesn't design any of that stuff. You know, he could act it out pretty well. He could speak it pretty well. I'll give him that. Let's look at the dynamic of how many women truth speakers are out there. And folks, look, I am not on the attack. I am not trying to say... And once again, I said this from day one. I said this from a few weeks ago. All right? I'm going to be labeled a misogynist because of what I'm talking about here on the air over the next few weeks. I already get it. I get that, and I don't give one damn how anyone perceives me. I don't care about how I am perceived. My job is not to be a good PR person for myself. My job is to get up here on the airwaves and speak the truth. Look at the social engineers who were directly tied in with those groups. Like Edward Bernays and Horace Mann and John Reese, you know, and Walter Lippmann and the Huxley brothers, Julian Huxley, Aldous Huxley, Carol Quigley. You know, what about the behaviorists that worked with all of these people? John B. Watson, B.F. Skinner, Ivan Pavlov. How about a huge behaviorist in the field of mind control through indoctrination? Wilhelm Wundt. You know, look up, look up Wundt's work when it, come to, when it came to bringing in the Prussian model into the United States, the outcome-based edu education system into the U.S., His connection with dark occult orders like the Order of Death, Skull and Bones. How about the Rockefellers Foundation involvement in all of this? The Rothschild dynasty's involvement with it through their ownership of publishing houses all over the world. 
Council on Foreign Relations as a think tank, propagating it. And that then you get to what I would say might be the, high, the top of the hierarchy when it really comes to the propagation of eugenics, period. And namely, the neo-feminist agenda of uh, how the neo-feminist agenda is propagating this, what I call, epi-eugenics operation. And that think tank is known as the Club of Rome. That's directly, di works directly with the Vatican. And, I mean, you're connected in with some of the highest levels of Satanism and the dark occult right there. First of all, let me tell you something, folks. When I was involved in Satanism, the organization that they continuously said that they wanted that they looked at me as ideal for was the Club of Rome. And that if I were to be worked up into higher levels of the, the hierarchical network of dark occultism, the Club of Rome is probably what I would have been groomed for. And I'll, I'll be very open and honest about it, folks. Back then, I was a eugenicist. When I was a Satanist, my ideology was that the people who rise to the top of the pecking order in human society should rule humanity and cull the population. I wasn't about, like, I, I say I wasn't about slavery, meaning I didn't want to see direct human slavery, but I thought undesirables needed to go in order to improve society. And that's eugenics. That's saying we, as a more enlightened group of people, get to decide who lives and who dies. That's what eugenics is. So I was a eugenicist. The idea that it's a tough decision, but somebody's got to make it. And these eugenicists are who own and control the governments of the world, own and control the police departments, own and control the military, own and control the banking system. Own and control the education systems, so-called education systems. You, know, you look at their ties to other orders like the Fabian Society, incremental socialism, bringing the idea of the Marxist revolution through the long cult march through the cultural institutions, put forward by the Frankfurt School as well. Gramsci's plan, study it, read about him. They recognize the, the idea of the, the workers' rebellion, you know, wor workers of the world unite, wasn't, go wasn't going to bring in communism into the world. It had been tried and it didn't work the way they had originally envisioned it. So they said, well, we need to take over political institutions, we need to take over educational institutions, we need to take over the media, we need to take over, you know, Hollywood and movie making, we need to take over, um, you know, military and police forces, everything. We need to especially get our point people into educational institutions like universities. Now go on the Fabian Society's website. They have a whole section for women to propagate the neo-feminist nonsense. You know, there, there's no link for men to do it, you know, because they're trying to sell this to women. They're out in the open about it, folks. It's, it's so blatant that they're out in the open with it. Because they know that the way to destroy a society is to get the minds of women. You get their, their mind first, the men and children follow. Hitler understood this perfectly. He, he, he said it out in the open. Women don't even understand the power that they have to influence the minds of the next generations. And th there is all the example that you really need to understand. How is the world right now? Well, it's a very good chance that l largely through who they decided to breed with and the value system they decided to teach to bring to their children instead of a true nurturing value system that is based on the non-aggression principle, it's an inescapable conclusion that women have largely made the world the way that it is. You know, like it said in the movie Fight Club, we're a generation of men raised by women. Almost all single parents in the world are women. I'd say 98 to 99 percent of them are. Very, very few single fathers raising children, except in the examples where women pass early, earlier than the man. <clears throat>
These think tanks' influence cannot be overstated, and most people know nothing about any of them. How many people have studied the Club of, Club of Rome, or the Fabian Society, or the Tavistock Institute of Human Relations, or social engineering in general, or behaviorism in general? A paltry handful, because they don't understand mind control. And they don't understand how mind control is directed by 